Hello and welcome to James Dean Designs. Now this is part of my Calf Co Maker Beginner Series and in today's episode we are going to be making this, a 3D topical carving of Mount Rainier. Now in today's episode I will show you how to create the 3D file for free and then also import it into Calf Co Maker to generate all of the toolpaths that you need. But I should point out there are two previous episodes that may be of benefit. The first is an introduction to 3D relief carving. Now we're going to cover everything in today's episode, but in that previous episode, we're going to a lot more detail of some of the settings you can change when generating your 3D carving. And the second tutorial, link also in the corner, is the program that generates this 3D file for us in a similar way. There are some settings that can be tweaked in that as well. And again, it just goes into more detail about things that can be changed. As I say, we are going to cover everything in today's episode, but we're just going to go through it a little bit faster. So with that out of the way, let's dive onto the computer and get started. Now this tutorial does not start in Carvco, it starts right here on the website called Touch Terrain. If you Google this, it will be the first result that comes up and ultimately when it loads, just simply click anywhere on the map and it will load the tool that we need to get the free STL files of the terrain area. Now if you are searching for somewhere within the US, you do not need to do the next step, but if you are searching outside of the US, come up to this drop down menu in the top right hand corner and select the second option down. AW3D13, it's got worldwide in the title. I'm searching within the US, so I can leave it on the first option. Then come over to the search bar at the top of the map and type the area you are after. I'm after Mount Rainier, so I'll type that in and hit enter. Now you will have seen it loads the Google map first and then starts to bring up the terrain on top. If you don't see any terrain loading, it's because that menu that we just shown is not on an option that's suitable for the area. As I say, if you select worldwide, it should cover any area in the world. Now once you have the terrain loaded in the area that you want, select the big blue button that says recenter box on map and you will see this red border appear. This is essentially the area that it's going to take a snapshot of for the STL file. So you need to resize this roughly to the proportion of the material you are working with. So if you're working with a square piece of wood, try and keep it in a square format. If it's a rectangular piece, then try and keep it in the same ratio as that. My piece of material today is rectangular and ultimately I want the peak of the mountain to be roughly in the center of this box so just drag it around to cover the area that you want. Now like Google Maps because this is the base it can be zoomed in and out obviously if you want to get closer or further away depending on the terrain and area that you are using but this is suitable for me so we can now come over here to these settings on the right hand side. Now to get the most out of these settings you do ideally need to watch the previous tutorial but for speed what we'll simply do is select CNC large from the first drop down, CNC high detail from the second drop down, and that should be enough for what we are after. Now we click the big green button that says export the file. This screen will load up and it will take either a few seconds or a few minutes depending on the size of the file that you are trying to download, but just bear with it and it will get there. Once it has completed, the screen will update and it will say processing finished at the top. And ultimately you'll get a button down here that says download zip file that will contain the STL file that you need. So go ahead and click that and it will start to download the file obviously into your download area. If for any reason you need to go back to the map that you were just working on, the blue link down here will take you back to what you were working on and load in the same settings that you just had. Once the file has downloaded, head to your downloads folder and you should see a zip file like this. Right click on it and you should have some options that say something like extract here or open with Windows Explorer. I'm going to click extract here and it will pull the STL file outside and we can ultimately then access it within Carvco Maker. So let's head over to Carvco Maker now and do the next steps. So in Carvco Maker, let's head over to new model and enter in the dimensions of your material. However, here is the first tip I am going to give you. Make the measurements slightly larger than your actual material. So my material is 400 millimeters by 245. I'm actually going to do it at 404 by 249. This is adding a two millimeter border all around the outside. Now there are multiple reasons for doing this. The first is when we actually come to machine it, we want to make sure the bits travel slightly farther than the material itself to guarantee that it actually does cut all of the edge of the material. 
The second reason is because we are starting from the center of the material, as we can see here, it just gives us a little bit of an allowance in case we don't actually hit the dead center of the material. So two benefits to it, and as I say, it will save you time later on. I don't want to overcomplicate this. You could potentially use the offset method, but believe me when I say doing this method will save you a lot of time in terms of cutting later on. We'll click OK, generate the model, and the first thing we will do is head up to the relief, import and import 3D model. Head to where your file is saved, select it and click open. Depending on the size of your file, it may take a few seconds or maybe even one or two minutes. But when it loads, you will see a screen that looks like this. Now again, I'm not going to cover all of these settings in much detail because they were previously done. And to be honest, they are fairly self-explanatory. Now the first thing we need to do is resize the model, which is this dark area here, to fit the actual work area, the lighter yellow color. Now, depending on how you size your material, obviously you want to make sure it is at least the same size as your material, if not slightly larger. So for example, if on the X axis I enter 404, we can see on the Y axis that it is 255, slightly larger than the area that I need, but ultimately this is okay. It's better to be slightly too large than slightly under. So I'll click apply and make that the true size. We're then going to click center to bring it into the material and there it sits where we need it to. We'll click paste to make it permanent and then we will close down this dialog box. And ultimately, there is our 3D file embedded into our model area. And obviously, we can see all of the detail going on within it. Now, the first thing that we need to do is head over to the Toolpaths menu and select the 3D Relief tool right down here. Or it should be in your top toolbar up here as a shortcut. In terms of the area to machine, we want this to be the whole relief that we have just generated. For the finishing options, usually you'll want to use a tapered ball nose. For this particular project, I'm going to use a 1 16th tapered ball nose from Speed Tool. I'll just scroll down until I find it. There we are. Now, before clicking select, I just want to show you something. If we come into the edit menu, in here, we can see step over size down in this bottom right hand corner. Now, often when you see people referencing 3D carvings, they will talk about a percentage size step over as opposed to an actual measurement. This is where you find that percentage size, usually somewhere between 8 and 12 percent. You're going to get good detail. So I'm going to leave this at 8 percent step over, which is 0.125 millimeters. I'm going to click OK and we'll select that tool to load into the options. Now, the reason I just showed you that is because when you actually go to edit the options in here for the settings, it gives you the measurement, not the percentage. This is one thing I think Carveco could improve by adding the percentage step over next to it. So all of the settings below relate to the machine you have and the bit you are using. So I'm not going to go into detail. One tip I would suggest, though, is because we are only taking a shaving off on every single pass, you can sometimes afford to be a little bit more aggressive. So either increase your step down or increase your feed rate. And ultimately, this will save you time, obviously, when you come to carve later on. We'll scroll a little bit further down and we get to the tool clearance strategy. I'm happy with it being remaining on raster but I want to set the angle to 45 degrees. Now, another tip is if you cut it 45 degrees to the grain of the material, it will usually give you a cleaner finish that requires less touch up later on. We will leave tolerance and allowance as they are. Leave Z multiple passes as it is by standard. Come down to roughing options. Now for this project, I'm going to select a quarter inch down cut bit. And again, just scroll through my uh, menu until I find this. That one will do, select that and load it in. Now obviously the roughing is where it's going to take out the large majority of the material ahead of doing the finishing pass. So again, you can be pretty aggressive in terms of the bit being used and the step overs and the feed rates for this, as long as your machine is capable of handling it. And for the tool st clearance strategy, we can leave it on raster. This doesn't need to be angled. You can do, but as I say, that is completely optional at this point. Come down to Z slices. I'm going to leave this on automatic. I always leave it on automatic and we come down to the final options. I don't need any leading moves. You can add ramping if you want to. Now, ultimately, adding ramping will extend the bits of your life and obviously make the entry into the material gentler, but it does increase the overall time of the machining. So I'm going to leave that unticked for now. I'm going to come down to the material settings here. 
Next we'll come to our safe settings and I'm just going to adjust this to be five millimeters. In a similar way to ramping, the higher this number is, the more time it's going to add to your overall job. So you sort of want to keep it in a safe zone, but not too high that it extends the total time of your job. We're going to come down to define material. The thickness of my material is 80 millimeters. Now, another tip is set this slightly below the surface. So it will make this calculation automatically for you, but we actually want it to be just below the surface of the material. So I'm going to put the offset up for the top at one millimeter. Click OK. And now we can rotate this round and we can clearly see the model is set within our defined material. And if I align those two red lines there and zoom in a little bit, we can just see the, the model is now set below the surface of the material. And it just guarantees that every part of that, that model should get machined nice and clean without having, having any flat surfaces on top. Finally, let's give it a name, Mount Rainier, and let's generate our toolpaths. Now, this is a large 3D relief, so these will take a little bit longer. Just bear with it, and it will do all the processing and finish up generating the toolpaths. So all of our toolpaths are now generated, and what I'm going to do is simulate them one by one. So I'm going to come to the roughing cut first and simulate that. And we'll just see it eats away at the material, taking a large chunk out of it and giving us a rough idea of obviously the terrain of the area. It actually is a pretty cool effect that it does leave. Secondly, I'm going to do the finishing pass, but I'm going to do this with the control bar method. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I mentioned earlier about possibly using the offset feature to go larger than your material. Now, the reason that this is better is if I skip this along step by step, just click play and let it run slowly what you can see there it is just going left to right and doing obviously all of the terrain that we need if we slow this down and pause it and then as i say do it step by step we can clearly see it doesn't elevate now the video i'm showing you on screen now is using the offset tool but when it gets to the edge of the material and it knows it, there's nothing there it keeps elevating the bit up to finish the job now ultimately this is going to obviously take a lot more time than you need and add a lot of extra travel into your job so this is the reason i enlarged the material to be slightly bigger rather than using the offset feature that we could have used it just saves you time all round. i'll close that down and actually just complete the full simulation now and there we have our Mount Rainer all in its 3D glory, nice and shiny. And what we can simply do now is obviously export those toolpaths and that is our job done. Now, what we can do is if I head to the times for this job, obviously it is going to take a lot of time. We're going to have 10 hours. Now, as previously covered on other tutorials, by adjusting your settings, you can bring this down, obviously increase your feed rate, increase the step over, but it really is a trade off between the various aspects of these tooling features obviously you know the more detail you want in the job the longer it is going to take there's no way around this so ultimately it's finding that balance versus the time you want to spend machining it versus the actual quality and the detail in your 3d carbon but there you are we have gone from downloading an stl file of a terrain area to actually importing it into carveco and generating all the toolpaths for cutting so whilst this may seem like a complicated 3d relief carving well the process to actually achieve it is not that difficult as we have just seen so hopefully you did find the tutorial very useful as always if you did please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you very much for watching final thanks as always goes to my patrons and i'll see you all on the next episode